um, it's Melissa with Crowned with Alopecia. And today I am literally interviewing a beauty queen. So um, let me introduce you to Kayla Martel. And um, Kayla is uh, a former Miss uh, Delaware with the Miss America pageant. And um, Kayla, welcome today. And why don't you tell us a little about your story with having alopecia? Oh, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud of everything you're doing and all the work you're doing. Um, yeah, so I, I started losing my hair when I was 11 years old and uh, I had a full head of long blonde hair before that. So kind of looked like, you know, the typical ballet dancer, if you will. I always had my hair up in a bun um, and I really just, I think that as many of us do at that age, you kind of just take it for granted. So um, when all of a sudden my hair started falling out at the part and at the crown of my head, um, I was completely shocked. And not unlike other people that I've talked to with alopecia, uh, I tried to hide it. I actually tried to hide it from my mom and my dad. Um, I just honestly was a little frightened at the moment. And I didn't know what it could be. And the only people that I had ever known in my lifetime that had lost their hair as females um, were diagnosed with cancer and undergoing chemotherapy treatments. And so immediately my naive and young mind went there. I was like, oh gosh, I'm really sick. And so I parted my hair in a unique way every day, as long as I could. It only lasted a couple of weeks, but I tried to hide it. And now looking back, my goodness, that's not the person that I am today at all, but that was my initial reaction. And so finally, when I couldn't hide it any longer, my mom had clearly seen what was going on. And I think behind the scenes, she had called my doctor and tried to talk through with them uh, to schedule an appointment. And ultimately after lots of blood work and the same thing that all of us have gone through, uh, I was diagnosed with alopecia areata. And my hair loss is a pretty typical story of alopecia areata. So I have very patchy baldness always, and it always has been that way. Mm. I've never had alopecia universalis or totalis. Mm. Uh, it's always been in, in perfect little patches and um, I've lost my eyebrows and my eyelashes and some body hair over time, uh, but never completely bald. And um, I started shaving my head in college, I believe, because it just got to the point where um, it was growing in thick in some spaces and it was growing in gray in other places, which I know I've heard from other people as well. Like the pigment was completely gone from my hair that was coming back. Yeah. And I just kind of mess with it. I was just so tired yeah. of it. It's like crop circles growing on there, right? Yeah. Really? <laughs> You can kind of even see, you know, by looking at me now, you can see like where there are small circles and on the back of my head, there's a large one. I mean, it's just so funny. And I, I really did get to that point where I was like, forget it. I'm tired of chasing these things. I'm just going to shave it all off, you know? Yeah, same. When I had a couple of little less soldiers, I just, you know, I thought this is getting crazy. I'm just going to get rid of them. And, you know, yeah. it's so, um, you know, just, re just re it's like a release when you're like, okay, this, I'm taking control of it and this is how it's going to be. And um, it's such a big thing for a lot of people with alopecia to kind of take that next step if they're where they need to be, if that's where they yep. want to be. Yeah, um, I will totally agree with you. It's very liberating to just regain that control. It's, for some of us, it's the first time we have control over our hair loss. And so um, for those of us who are like seeking that control or that ownership, like just shaving it, buzzing it, whatever, is very liberating, but I, I completely agree with you that I'm so grateful no one rushed me into that decision. It was my choice and no one else's. And um, I know that that must be a tough thing as a parent to navigate if your child is just not there yet, you know? Right. Yeah. So, um, so you decided through college, you're going to shave it. And so where did, it, where did the Miss America pageant, where did I say, I think I'm going to be a beauty queen and I'm going to let everyone know and take my hair off and say, this is who I am. Where did that come about? Cause that's what I think is just so, so awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it's a funny thing because my mom had taken me to the Miss Delaware pageant or Miss Delaware contest year after year uh, because there was a girl who would compete from my dance studio. I danced growing up um, ballet and tap and jazz. And there was a gal who competed who did ultimately become Miss Delaware. And we would go and, and cheer her on and watch her because uh, you know I looked up to her and I loved watching her dance. She's a beautiful dancer and still is to this day. And so my mom just thought it was a fun date night for she and I to do together and go. And uh, my mom also th thought that it was really empowering to see these women on stage and just celebrating women and their talents. And so I, I went as a spectator for many years and cheering someone on that I knew and that I loved. And um, 
over time, I think just watching, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be up there one day. I'm going to be. <laughs> and I, my mom, actually, if, if she were here, she would tell you that uh, my mom was the first to think it was not a good idea. My mom thought this is going to be a disaster. Yes, my daughter is talented and yes, she's beautiful and she's well-spoken. However, these people are going to eat her alive. And when I told my mom at 13, that's when I first told her, I was like, I'm going to be Miss Delaware. I don't know when, and I don't know how, but it's happening. And I just felt it in my bones. And when I say something, I really try to see it through. It's just who I am. And I think immediately my mom clenched up and was like, oh, oh Lord, we better buckle up. You know, I think she was terrified. And um, the very first pageant that I entered um, and for many years I competed without a wig entirely and I think after the first one I did not win the first pageant that I was in as a teenager and um, that's the case for many people I didn't win and I think my mom thought okay she's got it out of her system you know we're good we can we can go back to dance and field hockey and that's where we're comfortable but the next year I was like we're doing this again okay yeah, yeah she just you know was along for the ride thankfully and the way that I uh, made my mom comfortable with it, which is just, again, so funny, is I was like, they offer college scholarships. There you go. That's a mom thing. <laughs> yes. So, like, even if I don't win, even if I place in the top five, I get a college scholarship. Yeah. And so, you know, I had her approval <laughs> from there. But I, I will admit that I entered it not worried about my hair whatsoever. I, I didn't give it a moment's thought. I never owned a wig at that point, nor did I have any plans on owning a wig. And um, I was on stage and, you know, just like any of the other contestants, just there to do my thing, to dance, to, to speak, to uh, do all the parts of competition. And um, it really did not bother me at all that I didn't have hair. And so I was fortunate that I suppose I was raised in a family that my mom and my dad both, um, you know, once they realized I was excited about something, they were like, just game to buckle just up. And, go. Like there's nothing we can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just buckle up and ride along the wave with me. So, um, I, I didn't have any moment of struggle of, uh, oh gosh, you know, I'm the bald girl in this contest until a couple of years later. So entering it was this beautiful, cool, random thing that I decided to do and just got hooked and, you know, competed at Miss Delaware in 2006 and seven and eight uh, without a wig at all. And I had good success. I mean, I, I placed in the top 10 and um, in the top five one of those years. I got great college scholarships. I mean, one of the years paid for my room and board entirely. Oh, fantastic. So, you know, I made good friends along the way that I'm still friends with at this chapter of my life and some great experience. And I was able to bring awareness to a couple of causes that were near to my heart, none of which were alopecia, um, which is all kind of part of the story. But yeah, I just was, you know, doing my thing and enjoying myself. It was kind of like a hobby, you know? Yeah. I love like that your parents just supported you so much, Kayla, and that they allowed you to do what you wanted to do that made something that made you happy and free and uh, confident. And to be honest with you, you really were bringing awareness to people, um, you know, long before you won the 2010 you know, Miss America pageant, you were bringing awareness um, all those years. And, and that's just obviously very admirable, um, for sure. Um, so what is it now, you know, later in life now, you hire a wife, you have kids, how is that um, with having alopecia? Um, do you just, do you go to PTO meetings without hair? How's that all working for you? <laughs> I do. You know what, most people uh, know me in this phase of life without my hair. And uh, I'm grateful that I have a routine. So um, even as a parent, if I'm going to meet my kids' teachers for the first time, or if I'm going to uh, take my kid to a play date or something, I my absolute uh, concrete routine is I always have my first meeting and introduction without my hair. And then I have the choice from there forward if I wanna wear my hair or not. Um, I think it would be a bit more um, alarming for some people and it's very much in my nature to be conscious of making other people comfortable sometimes. For sure. And so it's worked for me to always have my initial introductions with people or if I'm applying for a new job and going on an interview, I always, always show up to that first introduction if I can control it without my hair. And I mean, then voice. you never know what's going to, what you're going to say is really going to hit somebody else. I know that on some chat lines recently, Kayla, that has come up. Do I go to, to an interview without hair or how do I do this? If I'm comfortable both ways, 
Um, what do I do? So I feel like, you know, just you kind of sharing that as, as a mom and in some routines that you have can really help other people as well, because it, these are the questions that other people have um, when yeah. they have alopecia for a long time. So I love that. So um, I did want to ask you, uh, and also, you know, when I was a mom, when I didn't have hair either, um, you know, a lot of moms, they, like the kids are tugging on the hair and, you know, they, they wore a wig and, the, you know, they're feeding the baby or um, we didn't yeah. have that problem. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. It's a gra grab. So <laughs> it's so true. Um, I wanted to ask you, Kayla, um, a different question that I've been asking other people, and that is, what is something that you love about having alopecia? Um, I know that I've asked a bunch of seasoned people about what would they, you know, tell someone who's new to alopecia. But so uh, I think a great question is, what is it that you love about having alopecia? How has it made your life enriched and better? Um, so you know, why don't you share with everybody what you love? Yeah, you know, we, we kind of touched on this when you and I were chatting earlier, but uh, I think the real gift for me in having alopecia, especially being diagnosed younger, is this, this gift of empathy. I really think that um, I, I feel like I have a high level of empathy, but not only me, I truly feel like the people that I have met along my journey over the years, over the last 20 years, um, for some reason, you know, I feel like us, us alopecia unicorns, we just have this this heart and this gift of empathy to offer other people. And so um, we're able to create this really safe space and allow people to come into conversation with us or, or even start the conversation with people and, and kind of disarm them and let them know that we get it. We've, we've been through some stuff. We've been through tough things. We've had to make tough choices, but we're here and we're together and we're unified in this small to large size group of people who can relate to our experiences. And I, I really think that's a beautiful gift of empathy and relatability. Uh, it's something that is, is really special in 2022, I think. I agree. Well, thank you so much, Kayla, for meeting with us. And um, I probably will interview again because I just love our stories. And every time we get together, it's really awesome. So yeah. thanks so much, Kayla. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone.